Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. I wanted to hit record on this because I have kind of a unique opportunity to put myself into the shoes of a prospect, which isn't something I do every day, obviously. But, uh, you know, for you and for me, it's such a valuable exercise when you do need services, when you are looking to hire someone or an agency or a vendor to really kind of think through how you operate as a prospect and then reverse engineer that into your own kind of sales and marketing approach. And so kind of the example here, the scenario here is I actually need a new bookkeeper, a new accountant and bookkeeper to do a bunch of different services, which I hate, (laughs) right? I hate doing the books. I hate QuickBooks. I hate um, all the, you know, all that, you know, paperwork and numbers and all that stuff. So, um, What's interesting is, and hopefully by the time you hear this, I'll have a bookkeeper. I know there's lots of bookkeepers in our audience, um, but anyway, hopefully I have one by now. Uh, Anyway, what I wanted to say was, it's interesting as a prospect, I just want to walk through the steps I took because I think this is oftentimes what other prospects will do as well for you, no matter what niche you're in, whether it's business coaching, consulting, small business, whether you're a CPA and a bookkeeper, right? And someone like me needs you. The first thing I did was I started asking people I know, like, and trust, hey, do you have a referral, right? So that's one of those core things that if you've built a good network, if you've built a good referral system, if you're very visible in your marketplace, if you're kind of known as somebody that's sharing lots of content, sharing tips, sharing observations, similar to in my situation, if someone said, hey, you know, I want to get serious with LinkedIn and getting leads from it, do you know anybody? Ideally, if they've read my book, if they've been to my free webinars, if they listen to Nemo Radio, whether they're not, you know, whether or not they're a client of mine, they can say, oh, yeah, you know what? I follow this guy on LinkedIn. I've read his book. He's really good. Maybe you should check it out. So that's that first step is you want to kind of be known as a referral source. And so one of the great things you can do if you do use kind of the content marketing model like I do is make sure that you turn people into referral sources. So when you share a free copy of your book or when you share uh, free content, you know, an on-demand training, whatever it is with people and they write you a nice note and thank you and, you know, read your ebook, whatever it is, make sure you have some sort of simple ask that helps make them a referral source. So what I mean by this is I give away copies of my book, LinkedIn Riches, and then I have other versions of it, similar to Chicken Soup for the Soul. I've done you know, LinkedIn Riches. I've done LinkedIn Lead Generation for uh, business coaches, LinkedIn Lead Generation for small business owners, LinkedIn Lead Generation for franchise consultants. So like a Chicken Soup for the Soul approach. And what I'll do is if someone says, hey, I read your free version of the book, it might be the free ebook version as a PDF. It might be a free audiobook version that I give away. If they send me a note on LinkedIn or email, and of course, I have automated funnels to follow up and share and ask for feedback on all that content. What I do to kind of try to turn that person into a referral source is I'll say, hey, that's so awesome. What did you find most helpful in the book? just to spur the conversation. And then they might say, oh, this, this, and this. And I'll say, hey, that's great. I'm so glad that part resonated. And then I'll ask them, I'll say, you know what? It would mean the world to me if you could leave me an Amazon book review. Um, And then I would link right to the Amazon page where people buy the book. Because kind of a deep dive into content marketing for me, I obviously sell my books on Amazon. I sell them uh, as a Kindle book, you know, for a buck or two. Uh, I also sell them as paperbacks. Some people want hard copies. And of course, what the reason I don't run into any trouble as far as like cannibalizing my own sales or cannibalizing, you know, my own opportunities by giving away the same book for free is people who go to Amazon have never heard of me. (laughs) All right. People are using Amazon like Google to solve their problems. They're looking for a product or a service or a book to solve a problem. So the people that go to Amazon and type into Amazon search, LinkedIn book, LinkedIn marketing, LinkedIn sales, whatever the keywords are on Amazon, 
I want my book to show up on Amazon with a bunch of social proof and which, with a bunch of referrals. And that comes in the form of, you know, the, the Amazon ratings and the Amazon reviews. The more of those you get organically, the better your book surfaces in organic results, the more it tells Amazon, hey, this is a good book. It's got, you know, 500 five-star reviews, blah, 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 blah. So even if you're not using Amazon, maybe you can say, hey, that's so awesome. Could you leave me a quick um, testimonial on my LinkedIn profile? Or, or actually, I think it's called a recommendation. You could say, hey, if, if you wouldn't mind, since you found that ebook of mine so helpful or that webinar, it would mean the world to me if you could just leave a little recommendation saying what you told me you found most helpful. Here's a link to leave me a recommendation. Or could you go on my Google review page and leave me a recommendation? Here's a link. Whatever your business is, ask for that. Don't just say, glad you read the book. Thanks for telling me you liked it. Have a next step. Like, hey, could you leave a review here? Could you leave a review there? That serves also as social proof and referrals online. Because when I went and looked, so I asked people first as a prospect, do you know anyone? And they would give me their names. But the next step is I would go and look at the you know bookkeeper and accountant and CPAs. I would look at their website and I would look at their LinkedIn profile and I'd be looking for social proof. I'd be looking for, do they have any five-star reviews? Do they have any testimonials? Do they have any recommendations, right? So again, you're looking for that social proof piece of it, that referral piece of it. So make sure with your own lead generation of marketing and content that this is all connected. And if you want a great book on this, uh, I give it away for free. I eat my own dog food. I have a great book called Content Marketing Made Easy, which actually you can get for free as a PDF. You can buy it on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the show notes if you want the free PDF. But that talks about how to build these funnels and all these kind of connective you know, chain links in the chain so that if you give away the content for free, you're automatically following up with emails or LinkedIn messages asking for, you know, something in exchange, spurring on conversation, because of course the content may turn into a direct client, but even better, it may turn into a referral source, social proof online, et cetera. Now, the next step I took as a prospect, so I asked people I knew, and then once they recommended people, I started looking at people's platforms and website. Uh, the next thing was I started judging books by their cover. <laughs> what I mean is I judged people by how professional their website looked. I judged people by their LinkedIn profile. Did it look comp do they look competent? What's their photo look like? Do they look like a psycho, a serial killer, right? Or do they look like a normal professional person? Do they seem approachable? Do they have a story? So every site I looked at, I went to the about section to see. Is there a real person behind this business? Who are they? Where do they live? What do they do? Do they have a family? I wanted to know, again, at that cave person psychological level, is this someone I could know, like, and trust beyond just the services? And what was interesting, I ran across a lot of, well, first I ran across a lot of ugly websites and unprofessional and just outdated. They look like they were built in the 1990s, right, when, when we were first getting online. But the other thing was a lot of the websites hid or didn't say who the people are behind the business. It was just a bunch of stock photos and it was no stories. And I think that's a key component with your own marketing, your own branding online is make sure your website, your LinkedIn profile, your ebook, your content has you in it, right? It has your story. It has your journey. Put yourself out there in terms of, hey, here's a little bit more about me. Here's what I like to do away from work. Here are my passions. Make yourself a real human being. Like the per, one of the first persons uh, I booked a call with was they responded to me or whatever. And I looked at their website and I saw, oh, OK, they live in the same city as me. They're a mom. They have kids. They have hobbies outside of what they do. They have 15. They had all the experience too, 15 years experience, blah, 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 blah. But they seem like a real person. They're smiling. They're friendly. I learned a little bit about them and their family and what they like to do. So I felt instantly like, oh, I have hope. Like maybe this seems like a real person. You know, this could be really good. And so that's another key piece is just make sure that you're putting yourself out there. So again, the steps I'm taking, ask for referrals. Once I get those, I'm looking online. The next step I went to is I went to Google. <laughs> and I started Googling, you know, accountants, you know, Minneapolis, Minnesota, or, you know, my area I live in, and looking at what came up. And of course, at the top was all the sponsored ads with like national companies, and then like the fake ads, like accountant in St. Paul, Minnesota, and it's not really based there. It's like a virtual place. And so that was kind of a, you know, a, a frustrating thing. And I didn't find Google as useful as I have in years past. So then, of course, I went to LinkedIn. 
and I used LinkedIn like a search engine and said, accountant, a bookkeeper, filter results by people, filter results by first or second degree connections, filter results by my location, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And then I started looking through the profiles. Do they have a full profile? Do they have a full time business of their own or, or are they just doing this as like a side hustle, right? And so then I'm starting to message people and I'm laying out my message very clearly. Here's what I need services for. And then again, because I don't have anyone that I know, like, or trust, I'm defaulting to what most prospects do, which is also tell me how much it would cost. So I don't want to waste time. I don't have enough trust or value built with any of these people I'm reaching out to in terms of who they are and what makes them unique, different or better. So I'm defaulting to what most of us do, which is, well, how much will it cost? Can you provide the services and how much does it cost? Because in my mind, I have a ballpark monthly amount I want to pay based on what I've paid previous accountants and bookkeepers. So that's the other piece of it is if people don't know you or aren't connected to you personally, they will, at least I will default to, well, what's your, you know, what are your fees? Like, I just want to know, cut to the chase. Is it 10 grand a month? Is it a thousand a month? Is it a dollar a day? Right. Because again, not that I'm going to only buy based on price, but I also don't want to waste time uh, with someone who doesn't want to give me the solution I need or doesn't fit my budget. And what was interesting was the next step I took was then I went and posted a job on LinkedIn because you can do that for free. Uh, at least if you have a premium account, I have a sales navigator account. I don't know with a free LinkedIn account if you can post jobs. And they gave me a free $100 credit to boost it. And I basically posted the the laundry list, the checklist of services I need. I explained this is what I need, you know, US-based these are the tools, the software, whatever. And then people started applying via LinkedIn. And what was interesting was, again, so many people who aren't making it easy for me as a prospect. People would just kind of throw their resume at me or say, you know, uh, some would just say, well, I'm interested, book a call. But they wouldn't say anything about, I looked at your job description or I looked at what you need. I actually have 10 years of experience with this tool and I actually help people just like you. And I have 10 years experience doing da, da 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 right? They just were like, book a call, book a call, right? Or they would just send me links to their website and, and I have a team, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, don't make your prospect do the work, <laughs> right? Like make me feel courted, make me feel like you looked at what I posted, respond to what I asked about, explain to me whether or not you have expertise there. Another example of a bad fit was, a accountant wrote back to me right away and said, hey, yeah, I can help you, but I don't use this piece of software. I don't use bill.com to pay people. My clients have to use this other piece of software. And I was like, oh, well, then I don't want to work with you, right? Because again, they were basically saying to me, you know, if you want to work with me, you have to change software. And so I don't know, like, or trust you yet. I'm not about to upend my process and the way that I've run things in the past. Because again, as the busy, you know, CEO, business owner, I don't want to deal with new tools. I don't want to deal with new technologies. I don't want to disrupt the processes. I just want someone who can come in, use what we already have in place, which was set up by previous bookkeeping companies, and just run it smoothly so I don't have to deal with it. But again, if you come into a prospect and say, well, yeah, yeah I'll work with you, but you have to change, then unless they really want to work with you and know you and like you and trust you, or unless they're not married to certain processes or tools, they're going to immediately be turned off, which I was. I was like, well, no, I'm not going to change just to work with you. I don't even know if you're any good. Other people, too, like didn't fit the criteria in terms of they would apply and everything and they already had a full-time job. And I would say, well, wait a minute. Like, do you have your own bookkeeping and accounting company or is this just a side hustle? Yeah, this is just something I would do outside of my normal nine to five. And I'm like, well, I don't want that, right? So and you've really got to do a lot of sifting and sorting. What really resonates to me uh, as a prospect is, does someone personalize their kind of pitch to me? Meaning, I saw you posted about this. I saw you send a message about this. Will they write back and say, hey, I looked at it. Here are my thoughts. Here's how I can help you. You know, I'm comfortable with this, this, and this. You know, I haven't done that, but I have a person who can help me. And again, I'm not finding a lot of that, right? And so it's just a good reminder, again, as a prospect, I want people to cater to me. I want them to make me feel comfortable. I want them to kind of actually personalize the interaction with me. And most important, I want to know a little bit about that person, right? It's like, I don't really feel comfortable doing business with a stranger online. So that's why I started with personal referrals. 
and then now I'm moving out to strangers online. Well, what's the fastest way to not be strangers is share some content about yourself so I can get to know you not just as a service provider, but as a human being, right? And that's why I'm so intentional with every email I send, my eBooks, my videos, this podcast, like sharing personal stories about my life, talking about my wife, talking about our three crazy boys, talking about Rosie the dog, talking about hobbies and passions and things outside of work so that people can feel like, oh, okay, I kind of get it. Like I get your sense of humor. I get your personality. I get your style. And then I get what you're offering and providing. So just been a great exercise for me. I actually, I'm going to wrap this episode up because I got to go find a bookkeeper. <laughs> I got interviews lined up. But again, just think about it. The, the big takeaway from this episode is the next time you have to be a prospect and hire a vendor, find a service, and you don't immediately have someone, kind of jot down or even do an exercise like I did just now. Reverse engineer how you behave as a prospect and then look at your own company, your own marketing, your own sales, your own content, your own strategy and say, am I checking the boxes? Am I making it easy for a stranger online to get to know, like, and trust me? Am I building a good social proof referral network online with my free content and recommendations and, you know, all these things? Am I um, constantly showing up, providing value, staying top of mind? When I do try to jump in with a prospect, am I personalizing my pitch to them? Am I really explaining and listening to what they're saying they need and then not trying to shoehorn them into my own solution or just saying, go over here, fill this out, I don't care. Right. So, again, there's so many good lessons from this. Hope you found it helpful. Super excited um, to see you implement this in your own business. I know for me, it's been a really valuable refresher. Definitely, you know, takeaways I can improve on with my own marketing. So thanks so much for listening and we'll see you soon on another episode. 